Hello, it's the pageant nerd here, giving you a healthy dose of pageant history with a focus on Miss Universe and its associated national pageants. Today I'm focusing on Colombia and its history-making streak of the 1990s. Having competed at Miss Universe every year since 1958, Colombia has an impressive history. 35 placements, 17 of which reached the top five, including two wins in that debut year 1958 and also 2014. But it's Colombia's first runner-up finishes that have created the most news. Of course, there's the infamous incorrect crowning of 2015. That's for another video. And second place results in 2008 and 2017. But younger pageant fans may not be aware of the utterly outrageous streak achieved by Colombia in the 1990s. The first runner-up is Miss Colombia, Miss Universe, is Miss Namibia. The first runner-up is Miss Colombia, Miss Universe, is Miss Puerto Rico. Miss Colombia, that means to meet us in Miss India. That's right, Colombia finished second in three consecutive Miss Universe pageants. Just let that sink in for a moment. Three first runner-up showings in a row. At a time when Colombia was notoriously and unfairly known globally for its drug production, the pageant world was abuzz with speculation about why Colombia came so close, yet was so far from securing its second Miss Universe title. Was Miss Universe unwilling to deal with potentially negative PR, having a Colombian title holder? Did the judges simply get it wrong? Or were Paula Tobai, Paula Betancourt, and Carolina Gomez simply edged out by better candidates in their respective years. Well, it's not quite so simple, and if we look at those years one by one, we'll see it was more likely a combination of poor decisions, controversial competition format, and simply being pipped at the post. In 1992, the overwhelming favourite for the title was Venezuelan Carolina Ishak. Upon winning her national title, many pageant watchers were certain she'd claim Venezuela's fourth Miss Universe crown. In Thailand for the pageant, she dominated the preliminary competition, qualifying in first place a massive three-tenths of a point ahead of Miss Namibia, Michelle McLean. On finals night, she nearly swept the three competitions again, finishing first in swimsuit and evening gown, and second in interview storming into the top six and seemingly on a clear path to the crown. Miss Venezuela, she is really pulling a number. She's out in front. But the judges' questions in 1992 showed how the random nature of this format places disproportionate emphasis on the answer itself and not enough on overall performance. As such, when Ishak was thrown an old favourite pageant question, her answer came up short. If you could know one thing about your future, what would you like to know? I wouldn't like to know anything about my future because I like um, to live my day every day as it's the only day I have in life. And uh, I project my life, but I wouldn't like to know what's in the future. Her response was thoroughly considered and reasonably well delivered, but in failing to give a substantive answer, it got lost in the mix. Finishing in second place after the semi-finals was none other than Colombia's Turbay, who, like Ishak, spoke impeccable English and won the interview round. She performed outstandingly throughout the competition, and out of the two Latinas to reach the top six, her more humble approach was in contrast to that of Miss Venezuela's confidence. Would you prefer to live a life full of passion or one of serenity? Well, I guess a life full of serenity because when you're serene, that's what you say, uh, you, it's because you're thinking things and you may, can make fashion out of your serenity. Meanwhile, Miss India, Madusa Pri, who qualified for the top six in third place, knocked it out of the park in this round. If I could change the past, I would love to go back to the day when uh, late Mrs. Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi was assassinated and she was killed. Wow. And Miss Namibia, having placed fourth after the semi-finals, excelled with her eloquence and sincerity. I think I'd like to take my mother along, not because she's a maternal figure for me. She has been the most inspiration in my life in the sense that she has encouraged me to do many, many things. 
So when the final three were announced, it was Namibia, followed by Colombia, with India securing the third spot, leaving heavy favourite Venezuela in fourth place, her Miss Universe dream shattered. And then it was on to the final question. If you became leader of your country tomorrow, what is the first thing you would do? I would speak to the children, tell them that I'm there for them because they, they are the foundation of our every nation and I'd like them to know that I'm there for them. I guess I would orientate my people to a peaceful way, show them the, the right way to walk towards a, a wonderful life that is life with peace. In edging out Colombia for the crown, McLean turned out to be an incredibly popular philanthropic Miss Universe, who came through on her final answer shortly after being crowned, dedicating herself to the plight of children in her country by establishing the Michelle McLean Children Trust, which exists and thrives to this day. While the 1992 pageant in Thailand was staged in a beautifully calm, gentle environment, the same could not be said for the 1993 edition, held in the cavernous National Auditorium in Mexico City. After the home country's bet Angelina Gonzalez failed to make the first cut, the atmosphere in the venue was suddenly fraught, the raucous crowd turning on Miss USA and showering boos, especially on her, but pretty much throughout the first semi-final round, swimsuits. Disappointed that the Miss Mexico didn't make the semi final. Gentlemen, the 1993 Miss Universe Swimsuit Competition beginning with Miss Colombia. After the local favourite was shut out, the Mexico City crowd got behind Miss Colombia, Paula Andrea Betancourt, Miss Venezuela, Milka Cholina, and especially Miss Puerto Rico, Dianara Torres. Miss USA, Kenya Moore now better known as one of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, fought fire with fire and stood her ground during the semi-finals. She did enough to reach the top six, but no further. It was the three Latinas who surged ahead, speaking fast and loud about preservation of the Colombian Amazon, Venezuela being the birthplace of democracy, and Puerto Rico having the best of the world's most favourable features. At the end of the night, there was no obvious favourite, and ultimately it appeared that the uber-confident Colombia and Venezuela split some votes, allowing Puerto Rico to win in a photo finish. I believe that we should turn our energies to the children of the world to provide for them a better future because that is where our future lies. The announcement of the final results exemplified the drama that packed this telecast from start to finish. The second runner-up is Miss Venezuela. Miss Venezuela could hardly believe she'd been called as second runner-up. And then when Dick Clark announced the first runner-up and winner, the tone of his voice, plus the camera zoom, and the look on Torres's face said it all. This was a major boil over. The first runner-up is Miss Colombia, Miss Universe is Miss Puerto Rico. And Colombia had come second again. The fact the crown hadn't been properly adjusted ahead of time just added one final touch of chaos to what was an incredibly memorable Miss Universe. The 1994 edition returned to Asia for the second time in three years, with the Philippines hosting the pageant for a second time. Miss Philippines! This time around, the home favourite performed exceptionally, with Charlene Gonzalez thrilling the Manila audience by reaching the top six. How many islands are in the Philippines? High tide or low tide? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Venezuela! In what turned out to be a beautifully visual pageant, staged with a positive spirit between the contestants and a warmly enthusiastic crowd, the top three was very similar to the previous year, with the spectacular Minorca Mercado of Venezuela and Carolina Gomez of Colombia, backing up for their countries with outstanding performances. Yes, as a Miss Colombia, I have to work mm -hmm. and tour around my country, raising funds for charitable institutions. Gomez in particular was a standout. 
making a huge impact in interview with her warmth and fluent English and recording one of the highest ever scores in the pageant's history, a 9.897 in evening games. She is Miss Colombia, Carolina Gomez. If there was a year in that three-year streak Colombia was going to win, this would be the year. Her answer to the final question rightfully gave her the confidence to believe she'd done enough to win the crown. What for you is the essence of being a woman? The essence of being a woman is not only femininity, but the fact of wanting to live a life, and not only that, but learning out of it, and wanting very much to let your children enjoy you as a woman and as a mother. Namaste, I'm Sushmita Sen from a country where love is their sense of life, India. However, rising pageant powerhouse India had come on strong in recent years, finishing third in 1992, and top six in 1993. And there is, to quite an extent, a lot of peace, which is very difficult with so many uh, religions staying together. And that is why I said love is their sense of life in India. At just 19, Sushmita Sen was a phenomenal delegate. And in the end, her charm and wonderful final answer gave her the edge. I think being a woman by itself, the very fact that you're a woman is a gift of God, which all of us must appreciate. The origin of a child is a mother and is a woman. And, and, and a woman is the one who shares love and who shares and shows a man what love, caring, sharing is all about. That is the sense of a woman. Nonetheless, when Colombia was standing with India as the final two, you couldn't help but think, surely it won't happen again, but... The first runner-up is Miss... Colombia, that means Sushmita Sen, Miss India, you are the new Miss Universe 1994. Sushmita Sen had beaten Ashwarya Rai to win the 1994 Feminine Miss India title, and Rai went on to win the Miss World crown later that year. On one of the very rare occasions, one country has won the two biggest beauty pageant titles in the same year. As she recalls some years later, it seemed this was Sen's destiny to become her country's first Miss Universe. But that is the first time I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know what, but something. And when at the stage they said, top 10 finalists, we begin with. Miss India, Sushmita Sen. That's when I knew, full stop. Tonight's the night. After giving up her title in the Philippines, Dianara Torres became a celebrity there, starring in a number of movies before returning to Puerto Rico in 1998. She was married to Latin singer Mark Anthony for four years and has two children with him. Despite missing out on the crown, the Colombian trio of Turbay, Betancur and Gomez went on to successful careers in their own right, in modelling, acting, TV presenting and business. To mark the 20th anniversary of their historic streak, they reunited to co-host the 2014 Senorita Colombia pageant. Of course, there have been equally memorable streaks achieved in different ways. Venezuela's title in 1996, followed by second place in 1997 and 1998 their history-making back-to-back victories in 2008 and 2009, and at a national level, Texas's five consecutive Miss USA crowns from 1985 to 1989. All of these I plan to cover in future videos. This is the first video I've made for my new channel, so I hope you like it. I welcome any and all respectful comments, and of course any suggestions for future clips please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for alerts. I'm also on Instagram, so please check me out there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now from The Pageant Nerd.